Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple or Google, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2017. So I can vouch for this platform. They have over 10 million users, over 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals and equities on this platform. And if you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. Well, folks, we got some very big news coming out of China around crypto. So China's central television network just broadcasted the news that Hong Kong is allowing retail investors to buy Bitcoin and crypto. This is big because, as you all know, China has banned Bitcoin mining, has banned crypto trading, but they are allowing Hong Kong, which China now c controls, to allow crypto trading and investment. And we saw a lot of um, big financial firms are opening banking services to crypto companies in Hong Kong. So this is very, very big, folks. And here's what Binance CEO CZ had to say about this. He tweeted, CCTV just broadcasted crypto. It's a big deal. The Chinese speaking communities are buzzing. Historically, coverages like this led to bull runs. Folks, this is why I love this asset class. It's global. Even in the United States, you know, we're facing headwinds right now with the SEC and a lot of enforcement actions, but this asset class is reaching every part of the world, and those who open their doors to it are getting the benefits. Now, some may say, well, what about China's ban on Bitcoin mining and crypto trading? Well, you know, I've said for years, smoke and mirrors, right? And I've also, I tweeted out, any country that bans crypto and blockchain, they are, they are signing their economic death sentence because this is the future. This is what's going to help drive jobs, GDP, and growth because everything will be on the blockchain. We even see the governments and the central banks are working on CBDCs, tokenizing fiat on the blockchain. So Web3 is... Of course, inevitable. The tokenization of different assets and commodities and securities is inevitable. And even if you have some smoke and mirrors, some of these companies in the past or governments uh, who came out against crypto, many of them are doing a 180. So we're seeing a 180 here from China, folks. This is really, really big. And I verified this information uh, on this, the Chinese central t television network, CCTV, uh, the video th that's on their network and um, it was published yesterday. Now, here's a throwback, folks, because my OG listeners and subscribers, many of you may recall this video. It was from back in 2018, 2019, where you had a guy on the uh, one of the Chinese TV networks come out and say, you know, if Bitcoin gets adopted, it, we're all going to die. <laughs> Let me play the clip for you. Well, if Bitcoin will become the uh, ultimate type of uh, form of the currency been adopted by human society, I can, I can tell exactly what's going to happen as the worst scenario or yeah. the must scenario. We're all going to die. This is not a joke. So he was he was the assistant director of International Monetary Institute, Rem, uh, Renmin University of China. And this was the, link, the language he was putting out there. Very outlandish, right? We're all going to die. Bitcoin's going to become, you know, legal currency and all that. Unbelievable, right? But as I've said many times, guys, they are trying to shake you out. They, for the first time in history, retail was able to front run governments and the big institutional players because we didn't have to be accredited. It wasn't in the uh, circles of only the hedge funds and the wealthy. You could go buy a hundred bucks of Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, and any other crypto before many of them could have done that as institutions. But they know it's here to stay and many are adopting it, right? We're seeing the tide is shifting. We're seeing regulations opening up around the world and many big players are investing. Well, guess what? They don't want you to hold a supply. They, they want you to sell. They want you to you know shake you out, have you in fear. And then they go buy and then the market pumps in the next bull cycle and they have you buying back in at the top, right? That's how retail has been fooled for so many years. This is why I've often said uh, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors moves coming from these big players. So don't fall for it. Watch what they do, not what they say. It doesn't matter what they say. 
watch what they're doing, right? That's the important part of it. That's what I try to bring on this podcast. What are the moves being made by big institutional players and governments and so forth in adopting crypto? Now, on CZ's point that this uh, historically has led to bull runs, we are currently, you know, looking at Bitcoin's retracement, possibly back to 40 to 50K. And of course, uh, right now, Bitcoin is consolidating after a pullback, and we're still above that 200-week moving average. So I still think we have another leg up here. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that this is definitely a certainty. It's a probability, right? We're not dealing with certainties here. Um, and I think you know, Bitcoin could do what it did in 2019, go up a bit more, then roll over, uh, test some lows again, consolidate, and then next year is the halving and then start a big macro bull market uh, into new all-time highs into 2025, right? And here in with the Fibonacci model on here, we see, you know, we haven't really hit the levels we that we did in 2019. So that's what I'm looking at. You know, once again, not a certainty, but, um, you know, I think we could see a pump. The other narrative I think that fits with this is the U.S. government is working on the debt ceiling. So what does that mean? Well, we all know, guys, they have to raise the debt ceiling, right? Because then the economy, the government, everything would collapse. And this is a system we live in. There's a big dog and pony show between Democrats and Republicans, oh, raising the debt ceiling, blah, blah, blah. But that's the system. They print money. Folks don't realize we live in a debt-based system. Ever since we came off that gold standard under Nixon, they, that released the money printing and, and they have to keep printing. And I'm not saying I'm for large government spending. I am not. I hate it, right? I hate that we're in this position. But that at the same time, it's reality. So don't be fooled by all this back and forth, right? You have to, this is where you need to be financially educated and understand how the system works, how they print money. And this debt ceiling BS is just uh, a, a show, right? It's all politics, but they have to do it. And every Democrat and Republican, uh, if you put them in, in a room together and they, you know, they outside of the political spectrum, they would admit that because we have to keep the world going. We have to keep the society going, right? And until things change, this is how it is. So what does that mean? Long story short. Well, if they raise the debt ceiling, guess what? QE, quantitative easing has to come back, folks. And I think markets may rip on that news. And once again, that rally upwards uh, to Bitcoin's retracement. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, folks. Uh, once again, not guaranteed because no one has a crystal ball. But, uh, you know, this is, I think, a high probability of playing out. Now, Today, and all politics aside, this is not an endorsement of Ron DeSantis, but Governor Ron DeSantis announced he's going to run for president, um, and he did it on Twitter in a Twitter spaces with Elon Musk. But what we're seeing, a lot of these presidential candidates are talking about crypto, folks. They're talking about Bitcoin. Look at how things have changed. It's just a paradigm shift taking place. And that's a sign that this tech is becoming more prominent in society and in the world. People can't ignore it anymore. We saw RFK Jr. He's also talking a lot about Bitcoin. But here's a quote from Ron DeSantis um, in this um, uh, Twitter spaces. He said, people in Washington don't like it because they don't control it. And they're central planners and they want to have control over society. So Bitcoin represents a threat to them. And so they may want to uh, regulate it out of existence. For the bureaucracy to just do it on their own, that's what we mean when we say we have to return the government to the, to the people who are our voice. As president, I'll protect the ability to do things like Bitcoin. I just do not have an itch to control everything they may be doing in this space. And I think that current regime currently has it out for Bitcoin. And if it continues for another four years, they'll probably kill it. Now, I don't think they can kill it. Uh, the, the train has left the station. The genie's out the bottle. If they wanted to kill Bitcoin, they should have done it back in 2011, 2012 in that uh, time period. But uh, can they slow it down and roadblock it like they are right now? The Biden administration, Gary Clown, Gensler, uh, corrupt Elizabeth Warren and Brad Sherman. Sure, right? Their enforcement actions, lack of clarity, lack of rules. They are slowing down and trying to kill the startups. 
but the actual blockchains, they can't stop it, right? And as we've been talking about, this is a global asset class. And here's an, an example of that being global. Japan to tighten crypto anti-money laundering rules next month. Japan has continued to ratchet up its standards on crypto regulation for roughly two years in response to uh, criticism le levied against it. Uh, here it says the country's cabinet intends to implement the new measures come June 1st, which would see the enforcement of what's known as the travel rule Japan reported on Tuesday. It requires financial institutions to pass certain information between them with the goal of transaction traceability to prevent, detect, and prosecute money laundering and other financial crimes. So look, I have no problem uh, against this because as long as they're not stifling the innovation and they're just saying, hey, do KYC and AML, I'm fine with that because I understand they have a job to do to protect uh, consumers, protect society. And there's bad people who want to use crypto just like they would use cash, right, to do bad things. So um, I, I think these rules, which make sense and, you know, they're common guardrails, I think absolutely every country should do this. Once again, we're not here to endorse illegal activity or anything like that. We're here to invest and we want to have guardrails that are sensible and and uh, you know make logical sense. Once again, protecting innovation, letting the companies build their blockchains, build out their ecosystems, get real world adoption, while protecting um, you know against uh, crimes and bad actors. So um, this is you know once again not anything that that's draconian or, or outlandish. So this is great to see uh, governments around the world are doing their thing. Um, they don't always get it perfect. You know, uh, EU's got their MICA bill and or law and, and there's Singapore and these different countries. And they'll have to fine tune it because a lot of this stuff is nuanced, especially with DeFi, right? They, they And these folks got to get educated about it and understand the little nuances and how to regulate. So it's going to come. But as long as they're not doing, you know, stupid enforcement actions like we're seeing here in the United States with a corrupt Gary Genser, uh, you know, we, we can at least work towards a path of balance regulations. Now, here we got news that a nonprofit organization, Energy Web, starts sustainability registry for Bitcoin miners. Miners will be scored based on their use of clean energy and grid impact. Now, Energy Web, I'm, I'm actually pretty bullish on this project. I don't hold the token, and I, I probably will accumulate some of it, you know, not financial advice. And I had interviewed one of the folks, I believe the CEO of Energy Web, and um, they have a token, of course, and they're looking to help improve Bitcoin mining. So nonprofit organization Energy Web said it's starting a free sustainability registry for Bitcoin miners, which takes into account their energy inputs and impact on electric grids. According to a press release, the project Green Proofs of Bitcoin will act as a certification layer that can be referenced by lots of different organizations based on what the miner wants to share. Amy Westervelt, senior delivery lead and head of the uh, Green Proofs of Bitcoin initiative at Energy Web told Coindesk. So Argo Blockchain, Koa, DMG Bit, uh, Blockchain, and Gryphon Digital Mining and Hive Blockchain were certified at launch. Miners have been increasingly scrutinized for their environmental impact due to their high energy consumption. Most recently, the Biden administration said they uh, that they it's looking to impose a punitive tax on the miners based on their energy consumption. So I'm all for more efficiency and use of clean energy when it comes to Bitcoin mining. Um, I, I think... You know, this is a big part of uh, the economy now where jobs are being created. Well, I shouldn't say big part of the economy, but in big part of many local economies, like in Texas and other different states. And, um, you know, Bitcoin is helping to monetize a lot of uh, energy that's wasted you know, with flare offs and these different things. So it's great that these energy companies can monetize uh, wasted energy and become more profitable. And of course, Bitcoin being an asset that people invest in as digital gold. Uh, and, and it's, of course, hard money. So this is really great. Now let's move ahead. Coinbase Layer 2 base readying for mainnet launch. Timeline unclear. Coinbase said the Layer 2 is still building towards its Genesis window uh, with mainnet launch on the horizon. 
So for now, the company is incubating base internally, but the plan is for the platform to eventually become fully decentralized. It is built on Optimism's OP development stack, meaning that achieving the mainnet stage is highly reliant on the efforts and contribu contributions of OP Labs, a contributor to the Optimism protocol. So Coinbase, you know, looking to become more decentralized and they're looking to build uh, on a blockchain solution here. We'll see how it goes. But it looks like um, you know they're making some progress right now. Base is waiting on Optimism's upgrade for of Bedrock, which it says will significantly reduce the complexity and length of its code base. The team behind Base is also planning to compete or complete an infrastructure review with the OP Labs team, as well as get past internal and external audits with no critical severity issues, according to a representative for Coinbase. One goal that Basis uh, has already met is institution the regolith hard fork, which occurred on April 27, 2023. The planned upgrade was meant to enhance the network security and reliability, according to an April 26 newsletter from Base. So uh, we'll see how this continues, but uh, I like that these companies are looking to, uh, you know, innovate and build better solutions. And, you know, they're probably going to look to build a decentralized exchange. Uh, I think just given, you know, some of the headwinds they're facing here in the United States and then to provide different options in different jurisdictions. Now, some more Coinbase news, Coinbase's cloud's wallet as a service Hits Ethereum mainnet. The solution from Coinbase uses MPC technology to secure customers' assets. A new iteration of Coinbase's cloud product, uh, product which employs multi party computation, went live on Tuesday. The exchange said on Twitter, Coinbase on Twitter dubbed the Web3 wallet solution as a direct to user product, Coinbase wallet as a service, adding that the product has launched on the Ethereum mainnet. The exchange first introduced this product in March when the exchange described it as a way for companies fully customizable on-chain wallets for their customers. Um, so this is essentially a decentralized self-hosted wallet that um, it looks like you can uh, you know, set up and you would control your own uh, private keys. So Coinbase Wallet as a service users are intended to be able to remove their private keys off the exchange at any time. And um, it says here, MPC solutions typically split the private key behind a wallet into several shards, which can be split between multiple owners for safekeeping of their underlying digital assets. So a great solution here. And uh, I think this is smart, especially with the issues we're dealing with with Ledger. Um, you know, it's you, there's many software wallets that are self-hosted that, of course, you can control the private keys. Now, HBAR, we continue to see some, uh, you know, adoption news here around HBAR um, or Hedera, um, you know, the native token being HBAR. They tweeted out, we're excited to announce XSGD, the Singapore dollar backed stablecoin from Straits X is now live on the Hedera network. Uh, since launching in October 2020, XSGD has gained rapid adoption, surpassing over 7 billion XSGD in an on in on chain transactions. This makes it one of the largest non USD stablecoins by market capitalization today. That's pretty big, and especially given that it's non US um, and this it's on the Hedera blockchain. Guys, I'm very bullish on HBAR. Now I want to wrap it up here with some big NFT news. So. Ticketing will be a huge use case for NFT, says Gary V. Popular entrepreneur and VFriends creator Gary Vaynerchuk shared his thoughts on NFT tickets at VCon 2024, cryptocurrency and blockchain adoption at VCon 2023. I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Um, I follow the guy, you know, learning about marketing and, and different strategies to being an entrepreneur. And he was certainly ahead of the curve when it comes to NFTs. And look, I, I'm so bullish on NFTs because like Gary's saying here, your airline ticket, your movie tickets, your concert tickets, and even just special certificates from different brands will be in NFT format. And of course, that opens up so many opportunities for the holders where you can lend it out, where you can, there's a secondary market that you can sell it in and make money, right? Uh, this is the future, folks. NFTs will be powering many different things, certificates, and, and much more. And 
I mean, a lot of people won't even realize they're using an NFT, but it's it's coming. It's Web3, and it will be the natural evolution um, and transition from Web2, folks. So uh, many folks I know may be listening or watching are like, yeah, I don't care about NFTs. I don't hold any. That's fine. But just know the, these NFTs are being minted on, on many of the blockchains that you all hold the tokens for. So whether it be the XRP Ledger, Ethereum, Cardano, even Hedera, right? Uh, a lot of these projects are looking to attract NFTs and have companies launch their NFTs on their blockchain because that brings more value to the network, which obviously adds value to the native token. Here's another example. NFT ticketing dishes out a punch at Mixed Martial Arts League. Uh, the Mixed Martial Arts Organization Professional Fighters League will use NFT tickets, becoming the latest sports body to explore the Web3 ticketing functionality. See? See what I'm talking about, folks? Right? Uh, just wait to, to like the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, uh, the MMA, and all these folks start doing the same thing. It's going to become the norm and where everybody uses their smartphone now, right? I, you know, in the past, you you would usually have to print out your tickets, right? And take it to where you're going. Now you have QR codes. Well, eventually you'll have uh, NFTs, which will uh, enhance the, the uh, verification of those tickets and also unlock special benefits. And of course, um, you know, you can hold on to those tickets. Maybe they'll have a, they unlock special additional exclusive perks and so on and so forth. So this is the future, folks, and and it's it's a natural evolution and uh, super super excited. So the PFL, which features a season format that differs from the massively popular Ultimate Fighting Championship, has partnered with Web3 firm Crosstower to roll out NFT tickets powered by Ripple's XRP Ledger. The launch of the tickets will, will coincide with the start of the 2023 fighting season and marks the fifth year since the PFL began. So. As an example, if you're an XRP holder, guess what? This is bullish news. They are minting the NFTs on the XRP ledger. Um, and as a result, they, they obviously can you know buy and sell with XRP, uh, the, the, the native asset. Um, in addition, the more building and adoption on the blockchain, the more valuable it becomes. And uh, that, that value flows to the native token. It's Metcalfe's law, network effects. So very, very bullish, folks. This is why I'm super bullish on NFTs. And I'm looking to see, you know, which ways, you know, I can participate in NFTs and use technologies or invest in the companies building certain things. So I'm always looking and keeping my eyes and ears open. And of course, you all know, I have an NFT collection. Link in the description. You can check it out. You can purchase an NFT and unlock special benefits. It has utility. So be sure to check that out. All right, guys, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button and I'll talk to you all later.